I was like, okay, that means I'm just here to support. Like, I'm not going to push anyone to do anything. Obviously, I'm just here to support. And so I was thinking, I was like, what is, how come I don't know the answer? I was so frustrated with myself. I was like, how come I don't know how to help this person? And I feel like left her very stressed out. This like birthing, orgasmic birthing book, she was like talking about from like three different categories, like technocratic, where uh, it's technocratic, humanistic, and holistic. So she was saying how um, technocratic majority of people think, you know, uh, or doctors, whoever health professional thinks the body is like a machine, disease comes from like without, um, the standard of care is best to control X, Y, and Z. And so like, that's where she's talking about, like, there's you no know, eating during drinking or labor. There's uh, a lot of FaceTime during, uh, you know, your pregnancy to kind of monitor, make sure you're in this control thing. Cause um, I had a, whatever, uh, one, one of the moms I was taking care of, things and I was like okay that means I'm just here to support like I'm not gonna push anyone to do anything obviously I'm just here to support and so I was thinking I was like what is how come I don't know the answer I was so frustrated with myself I was like how come I don't know how to help this person and I feel like left her very stressed out (laughs) right before she went in that that time that night for her induction Mm -hmm. and I was like ah (laughs) and so I was reading this book and then she was saying how, um, you know, when it's past 42 weeks, there's always a pressure to, for you to be inducted um, because the risk of stillborn, but it's not really true because of X, Y, and Z reasons. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, I should have read this book like before when I had this the whole time. And so there's all these different things. And she was saying, if you see the doctor routinely face to face, and she saw this doctor, OB, every single week she got ultrasound every single week was always cautious is his head down still every mm-hmm. single week and it's just like this like she, she was walking into this control a lot of inductions lead to emergency c-section because you cannot force the body to do something it's not prepared to do you can't you just can't yeah. and um it was just an a topic like a talk i'm flirting with on talking about how boundaries we're taught that they are put in place it's kind of like well we're conditioned to believe that they're put in place to more so keep people out you know to make sure people don't cross over into what's not right for us kind of thing but really boundaries are in place to keep us focused on what is most important to us you know so you we can only control how we react to things. We can only control like our emotional reaction and things. So um, we have boundaries because we know what our trigger is. Like we know what too much is for us where someone else may not, you know, they have to kind of guess it. Yeah. And so point being that the point of the conversation was that, you know, like we have the boundaries so that we can make sure we have a controlled environment for what will work for us, right? And so that's kind of where the risk you run when you choose to go with a hospital for your birth is because now they've assumed responsibility for your baby. Yeah, and you because they've, yeah, and so because they've assumed responsibility for your baby, they do have liability things. Like they have things where they can get sued over if X, Y, and Z happens and we didn't try A, B, and C methods, you know? And so because of insurance, because of their liability and their responsibility, they have to be very statistical and data-driven and putting things in a controlled environment that works for what is successful to them, you know, because they have an institution to protect. Whereas the mom, that's why we're seeing um, doulas and midwives and home births becoming more popular because moms no longer are interested in giving away that liability. Moms are becoming more confident in saying, I am perfectly capable of assuming full responsibility for my child and how they enter into this world. I trust myself to know when something is wrong and I trust myself to know when I need to say intervention is needed for my baby. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I trust myself for that. And so they're able to get a team like you or like a doula to be there when they are in birth because they are aware that I don't know everything. I am only going off what feels good right now, you know, and what doesn't feel so good. So if something happens, I want a team of educated, you know, well-practiced people to be there for me and my baby. But I also want to have the power of responsibility where I get to decide when intervention is necessary. So I think it's like, I totally hear you where it's frustrating a mom having to go into that controlled environment to induction where we know it's most likely going to end up in a C-section because her body just wasn't ready yet, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. like, and then sometimes there are the off chances where you go in for a C-section and it just, so I mean, induction and it just so happened your body was ready. So everything works out great, you know, because your body was ready for it. Um, but you know, you, you kind of feel it, you know, when it's time, there are the moms who will be like, I know I needed to be induct and in, induced or something would have happened to my baby. And then the doctors came out and say, I'm so glad you got here when you did, because your baby's been losing oxygen, mm-hmm. you know? So moms know, and I do think you bring up a really great point of knowing how to trust the team you choose you know like if you choose a medical team at a hospital you're going to have to trust them when they say we're going to induce you and you have to be okay with that and if you already know that just by thinking of it it starts to give you anxiety maybe we should look at other birthing options because I don't like the idea of if they think it's time to be induced and I don't think it's time to be induced I don't like the pressure that they're going to put me under for that I want to walk into my birth fully confident you know, so let's waited for some reason, right? Right. For the reasons to induce, because now I'm going to give you no reason, obviously. (laughs) Right. And I think, I think it goes back to your, the illusion of choice thing. Like they'll tell you going in, you know, Hey, tell us your birth plan. We're going to make sure it's all according to what you want. We're going to make, I know that's what they did for me, but then when it came down to it, they were going to do what was best for them because they had money to make and liabilities to keep in place. And you really can't knock it because they are a business and they have to stay in business. And this is what they do to stay in business. But I do think there's a lot of power in how we're seeing so many women choose, not even just women, but their partners to stand with them and say, we're doing this home birth because that's where the power is for this mother bringing life into this world. And she's the one who needs to feel most empowered in this situation because she's the one who's actually birthing the child. Mm -hmm. And then how, when more women chose to stand in that and say like, I do have power around my birth and how I'm gonna bring the child into the world, medical professionals had to get behind that because then they were losing money. So then they had to start making the birth experience in the hospital, most like the ones moms are wanting at home. Mm-hmm. because the moms figured out I can do it at home with or without you. This is my baby, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I do think there's a lot of power in that though, where it was simply, you know, we see it when it comes to protesting and um, standing up for more like political rights and things, mm-hmm. but just in when we as a collective decide there has to be a better way, I'm going to pursue this. And like when one of us can show the possibility of how hard it's not, because at first home births were made to be believed, they were super hard, you know, and so painful and so much risk came with it. Yeah, and it was just like so unsanitary. And why would you do such a barbaric thing to bring your child into the world this way? And then there were those brave few who were like, I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm gonna make sure that whatever pain I have, it's manageable. You know, the sanitary things are taken care of. Like I got this. And then because of those few, more and more women started to see this isn't barbaric. This is completely natural. Mm -hmm. Like so many more moms are having more successful home home births because they're no longer afraid going into their birth. They're empowered because now they understand my body's made to do this. And they have a team behind them who's reminding them, your body is made to do this. You got this. Like, just do you. Yeah. And like, I love pictures when they have uh, the kids 
like around the mom as she's like, you know. Oh my like, gosh. You know. We were supposed to find that last season. I don't think I ever did, but that video of, um, it was just a random Facebook video that came on. This mom, I think it was their fifth or fourth child, mm. maybe their fourth child. She had three little girls all around her while she was giving birth. And, you know, she was on her birth ball and they would come put ice on her neck or like put oh. ice chips on her lips and they'd pat her and they massage her back and stuff. Then the oldest daughter caught the baby when the baby was born. Oh, wow. And then the youngest daughter, she's crying, right? And she looks at the camera and she goes, I'm just so happy. <laughs> and it was just like the sweetest thing like oh I'm getting teary thinking she's like I'm just so happy and I think in that moment like those are the things don't tell my husband this those are the things that would convince me to have another baby because mm -hmm. oh you hush <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I feel I didn't fully get in my birth experience was that a hundred percent my controlled environment not the doctor's controlled environment yeah but my controlled yeah. environment where it was set up for my boundaries for what felt good for me not what felt good for my medical team because my medical team just had to watch I had to bring the baby into the world <laughs> you know? <laughs> come on <laughs> you're like and they were great. I, I will, I do have to say I was blessed with both times. I had the people I needed to have in there with me, mm -hmm. you know? Oh. So, um, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse, but I was also blessed in the sense where now I don't think I had any conversations like this, like you and I have around birth and motherhood. And I think that's why I do like to be so vocal about it because looking back, I can say, I had a lot of people who would empower me by saying like, it's your body, you'll know what to do, you know, but that was about it. Mm -hmm. Like there was no other talks uh, that, that was about it. Like that was the most I got, but that was enough. That was all I needed when things got tough. I remembered this is my body and I get to decide how to bring my baby into this world. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. because I do think that the more conversation a woman can be a part of around birth and motherhood, the more comfortable she becomes. It's, you're listening to all these women who will tell you day and night how much they adore being a mom and how they do birth all over again, but you never really get to hear them talk about the ugly side of it. You know, so to be able to hear moms, I, I think it's real cute when us moms can get together it usually happens at like my mini sessions where moms can get together and we're just talking about and nursing and what it was like and like raising toddlers and how crazy that could be sometimes but how we wouldn't change it for anything mm -hmm. and all of us are always like we wish we were around more conversations like this in pregnancy or leading up to birth because it would have taken so much of the anxiety away of the like, you know, again, the conditioning of birth is barbaric and hard and, you know, you need all this intervention or else it's gonna be insufferable, mm -hmm. you know, but really it's not, yeah. it's not. Like, I'm not gonna say it's not painful, it's but- not like the easiest, you know? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but it's not barbaric, it's not insufferable. Like, yes, it's probably the most intense pain you'll ever experience, like one, one of the top, pains you'll ever experience but that's so brief and then there is some kind of chemical some magic hormone that's meant to make like it all go away yeah and like, yeah. what was it <laughs> the book I was mentioning one of the midwives I'm sure a lot of midwives have so many different stories how like supposedly like within the four centimeters dilated they're like crazy screaming and then like the next minute the hormones kick in and you're like in euphoria and you're just like in that and like, okay, I can do this and just kind of up and down rest. She's the way she described it. Cause I just, I, <laughs> when I was a kid, I just did, did not want to be anywhere near birth because of the horror stories and the movies and all these different things. 
And then when you got me this present for um, the egg, I was like, okay, let's, let's see how I can incorporate this to make sure I kind of, I'm aware of myself, know what to do, let go, all these different things. And then when I read this book in regards to this midwife, she's saying how there can be an orgasmic birth and the way, um, I think she was talking about one of the uh, Jamaican midwives, how um, if your if your pelvis, I think she said pelvis, if your pelvis doesn't open up, you're not ready to give birth yet to where when you lean forward, it opens up a certain angle for you. And then when the baby's head comes out a certain way, it hits your G spot <laughs> to where it's like orgasmic when you like let it happen, allow that like, like sex in a, in a way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to think. So I <laughs> no because that was, so with Madeline, I wasn't in that position with Madeline. I was definitely on my back most of the time. Um, and that was the whole, you have to push her over your pelvis. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, cause she was it's like, it's closed. Of course. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like when, when in life, especially I was 22, had I ever experienced pushing anything over my pelvis, <laughs> you know? So it's like, what I said, what muscle is that? Like, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Because I was trying to understand. so telling too, right? But it's then- so telling to where like 22 years old, what do you mean by like this? Like a lot of us don't know what all this is. Like even yeah, like, I was- age, right? Honestly, honestly, Kate, this is such a tangent. But in that moment, I was like, I don't know my body like I thought I did. Like in that moment. I feel like, shoot. Maybe I should have like, oh. <laughs> but um but with Michaela I was you know because this is some years and like I said this was around the time where enough moms had decided I do want to feel empowered around my birth so the hospitals were starting to um kind of reflect what a home birth would feel like and so part of this was having more freedom of movement and so um that was the birth where I did a lot of squatting and it did now getting to orgasm. I can't say that ever happened. No, seriously, but there was something that felt really good and like very comforting around the, the squatting. And cause it was like, at that point I was working with the contractions mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. not trying to like go against them or I don't want to feel it kind of thing. It was like when a contraction would come, I would squat the entire contraction, like hands on a bar, push down, and we would just squat down the whole way. And then when she was crowning, it felt, it was, it, that scared me because I didn't get to experience that with Madeline. And Michaela's birth was so fast. My body changed a lot quicker than it did with Madeline. Like I feel like with Madeline, that was like a 16 hour birth. Uh-huh. So I had time in between everything, you know, as my body was changing, I was like, I got to adjust into the changes. I even took a lot of naps with Madeline's birth, oh, nice. but yeah. Michaela's birth, mm-mm, mm-mm. you talk about screaming. I wasn't screaming at four centimeters. I know I was screaming at about six. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the, every single time they'll tell me I'm at eight centimeters, eight, maybe nine. I'm pretty sure it's eight though. And um They'll be like, so you're not ready to push, but I'll get to that point and it's time for me to push. And then they'll come and they're like, you were just at eight centimeters. I'm like, I told you. And magically, you know, she's crowning. But in that one, everything's moving so fast. I'm in this squat position. Like the nurses are like, we're going to have to lay you down. We're going to have to lay you down. And I do remember all I wanted to do was keep squatting, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. like, because, and I told them, if you want me to lay down, you're going to have to lay me down because I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing right now. Like I cannot move from this position because this is what feels good to me. And so they, it was two of the nurses and my husband flipped me to lay on my back. And then she like came out after that. So I'm, I could see like, you know, I didn't get to experience the orgasmic part of it, but I could see that may have been like the release that was coming for me because the whole time I'm squatting through you know, I'm squatting through the contractions. Like I was squatting at home through the contractions. And so 
at that time, like when they flipped me, that was when it felt strongest to squat. And I could, I could totally see that release have feeling orgasmic in the sense of just from the buildup that was there and just from everything it took, you know, to get to that moment. Because I'm telling you when that lady was like, you got to lay down, like, no, you got to lay me down Mm -hmm. because this is happening just like this. Like I'm not doing anything. That's what she talked about, like from transitioning, hey, to um, like humanistic to holistic. Cause she's like saying how, <clears throat> so it's such an amazing book. Um, I'll read the, like the first quarter of it. What's it called? <laughs> it's called Orgasmic Birth. Okay. <laughs> it's like my my go-to guide to like how to get an orgasmic birth in the future. So I won't be all, you know, more empowered for sure. But <laughs> um, how she talks about humanistic is more of a modified version of the, um, the technocratic model to where it's actually like, you can actually eat now during birth. You can actually, you know, do, you know, be in that position, the squatting position. You can actually move and not like tethered to the, the, uh, the fetal monitor of where you're stuck and you can't have a certain position, all these different things to where, you know, you have concern and kindness for the patient or the person that you can move and all these different things. Now the holistic part of it basically redefines an aspect to where like you were mentioning, like moms who are in home birth, they're empowered. They know exactly, you know, they have that authority, like in themselves, knowing that I'm responsible for whatever that is going to come next, that I'm going to educate myself, um, you know, pros and cons, all these different things, no matter what tests are thrown at me, I know like how to find the answer. I know how to investigate. I know, you know, what's good for me because I'm the authority versus giving away that power. So I thought that was a very amazing, enlightening book for sure. 